thank you thank you lord thank you thank you lord and that's all we have to say here on life matters with anwa Didiri. if this is your first time in the in the building i gotta do something for you i gotta do something for you yes 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 my my bell is back my bell is back 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 and i say a big thank you to everyone that tunes in week in week out on life matters i know they do it i hope you like our new setup i love it too like i really love it too even though so so you can see the lights having i don't know if this on on my personal page you can see it so there is the the lettered Life matters and life matters and I did I'm loving this new setup. I allow me day. Ah, everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome to the show today. Welcome to 2019. For those who joining us this year, we had a fire packed se session last week. Oh my days! It was fire packed. Like it was, it was something else. To be very sincere, like I, I still haven't recovered. Like normally when I when I have the show, I sometimes don't go back immediately to rewatch but last week i had to go back to rewatch and be re-blessed you know minister jumbo was fire last week it was fire and you know one of the things i've noticed about it is when god wants to do his work don't don't predict anything just believe that's all he wants to do have faith believe and he will do it you know last week i was like oh we're in the first show a guest oh my god i wanted to be very sure because we had a pre-sure but a pre-show on the second because i wanted to welcome everybody back to the show and welcome back to 2019 da, 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 da. and funny enough we had our first show last week and it was fire packed for those that were here last week and you're here this week, you will tell you will, like you know, you know in your heart of art of art of art that last week's show was fire packed. So if you have still not watched it, what have you been waiting for? You can either check Life Matters Anadiri Facebook page, Life Matter Facebook page, or go to our YouTube channel. Yes, it's just see, it's as simple as one click subscribe and watch that is all you need to do subscribe to the youtube channel i know i did and just watch it watch it i will be blessed you know we have i believe we should have over um we have over 40 episodes you have to create an archive for life matters on youtube so that people can watch too then um i wanted to share this last thing but i think it skipped my mind i wanted to tell you about my podcast so one thing that i like to do i have noticed i love doing right now is you know someone was saying someone told me to write a fun fact about myself and i noticed that i love talking like on the radio on like talking and you listening to me and you gaining and it been an impact impactful session but last week um no, two days ago, that was Monday, I, I put this on my podcast and I wanted to share it with you this morning before I go into the show. Um, so the title of the podcast was When God Uses Your Weaknesses as Strength. And I'm wondering what happened. You'll be wondering what happened. So let me tell you the story. So I have this friend, a very, very good friend of mine. He told me to come. Um, he was having an online like an online conference. But how the conference runs is that you kind of have to type what you're writing to the people and that's one of my very strong strong like it's a weakness of mine like for me right now i can talk to you like this but when it comes to typing up and arranging all my thoughts together it's always a little bit difficult so i tried several times tried several times tried several times tried several times and still there was nothing so i told him i said i won't be able to do it that i'll probably send a voice note or send something like i didn't want to stress myself at all at all at all and i told myself then he said i don't worry that well we can manage whatever it is but if you can try to type it so i just prayed to god and i was like god what exactly do you want me to speak with the, what to say to these people because i don't even know them like it, you're not seeing people you're not it, it's, it's like it's different when i am looking at my screen right now and i'm talking and i'm seeing people comment or people react or people in love or people like you, you get that kind of thing but it's different and i know that be, at, the, at the other side of the radio we know some people are listening right in over 35 countries voila so i'm like okay um 
and I was praying to God and I was like, God, what do you want me to talk about? What do you want me to say? I need your word. And I he kept going back and forth like that until I um I just got questions from the Holy Spirit and I just wrote I just tapped down those questions and the topic was I should talk about purpose right and I'm like oh okay no problem I'm gonna do that da, 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 da. And, and, and I kept praying and I kept holding my holding God's hand that okay this will be good and I typed the first thing okay hello everybody this 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 and people I don't know where that speed came from I was on this online conference for one hour, 30 minutes, and it was one of the most impactful sessions for me of 2019. It was a great privilege for me to have shared um, God's word because it was like, oh, it's a mixed crowd. They're Christians. They're Muslims. They're people that don't believe in God. And I'm like, well, God, I believe in you. I love you, Jesus. And I can't hide your name. So for everything I said, I had to give them reference. And I said, for those that believe in, in the scripture, you should know that this person lived the purpose of your life. This person walked with God. And you know that. And this was this example I gave. And I said, and this was me typing. So I was not even talking. And I was I was pretty much surprised. Like I was like, wait, I know what just happened. You actually we're, we're talking with these people for one hour, 30 minutes. Like, I don't understand. And, and I kept going like that, going like that. And what the Holy Spirit dropped in my heart after the session was, when I say that my strength is made perfect in your weakness, I don't mean it like, oh, I'm just saying something or trying to motivate you. I really, really mean it. My strength is made perfect in your weakness. And it just showed me that what you think is a weakness of yours, what you think that, oh, I'm struggling with, what you think that, oh, I have tried so hard, I have, I have, I have tried to do this thing by myself, I can't do this, I can't do that. You just give God that 100%. I am telling you, when you give God the 100%, when you give God everything, everything like i mean everything when you when you let god anchor that event or that session or whatever it is god just makes things smooth for you and you know depending on god is another topic that we need to talk about in 2019 because a lot of times we say we depend on god, on god but we have a backup plan so i i really felt like oh if if it doesn't work out i'll just send voice notes and i let, I let them ask questions but at some point at, at the other side of it i said no i trust god so much that i know that it will come true for me and that was when i knew that god actually listened to like i know god lis god listens to our prayers oh um there is no small prayer or there's no or when i say it probably god will answer no once you believe in your heart god just needs that belief that faith that faith once he sees once that's all in it and for me it was a great session like the feedbacks were awesome questions were flooding in every 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 time it was it was it was an awesome moment like i i can't i can't but thank god for that that session it was it was impactful and one of the things that i started with one of the things i started with was number one there is no how you know your purpose without god now i reminded them that don't get me wrong there are people in this world that don't believe in god they're very rich they've invented things to us they're making impact and all that but i still believe that and this was the example i gave them i said when you have, um, when you buy a, a appliance, or let me use this example. So when I got this shelf, when I got this shelf, I felt like I didn't know how to fix it. Like I didn't know how to fix it at all, at all, at all. So when I got it, I sat down, assembled it. I was trying so hard, I got stuck, but I was using the manual. And they already put in the manual that when you get so stuck that you can't proceed, there's a number there or someone that will be on the line that can help you out to whatever you're assembling. And I tried so hard and I called my dad and my dad helped me fix it. And in my head, I'm thinking, so there are three things I need. First, I, want, I have to actually use the manual. So... It means that I cannot know the, the essence and the way this can be fixed without the manufacturer. Means that God manufactured, God created us. He put his spirit in us. So it means that we can't know our purpose without him. Then the flip side of it that just came to my heart was the, the work of the Holy Spirit, the spirit of God. That he said, 
when God, Jesus said that when he when he when he goes to me the father he will send the spirit to be a comforter to be a teacher to us so for me the way my dad stood in to help me fix that thing made me remember and think of the holy spirit being our helper our comforter our guide our counselor and it makes me now realize that most times the reason why we doubt ourselves and why we go all the way to do things by our own strength is not because God has not given us the strength to do it, but sometimes we get stuck on the way just because we don't utilize the help of the Holy Spirit. And fourth, third is for you to believe. Believe in those things and seek help. So yes, I went to try just this morning. I have my guest here. I believe. I believe. So, um, so I, I, as I was saying, Believe in God. I need to have faith. I need to um, use, utilize the relationship I have or I had with the Holy Spirit, and that's that's what makes a man know his purpose. So saying that you can't know more than the person that designed the thing. So without having God in your life, and I just supercharged them that the more you have that relationship, and and one of the and I'm and I'm I'm writing an article, and one of the things I wrote was this, and I'm gonna read it. I wrote. Just like when you, when I work with my dad, I trusted and believed that I would never fall in a ditch because he held me all the way. The moment I let go of my hand and fell or hit something, he tries to comfort me and clean the wound. Having this memory, I compare it with our walk with our Father, our Heavenly Father. Just like Jesus wants to have the heart, wants us to have the heart of, of children. And this is me writing this article, right? Just like how Jesus wants us to have the heart of children. This means that when walking with God through life's journey, total dependence, trust, and obedience are part of what will help us through our walk with him. So it is very, 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 very to put our total dependence and trust and believe and obey God. And just believe that he that has made you, he has a plan. He said... Jeremiah 3 13 says, I know the plans I think through what you said, the Lord. The plans of good and not of evil to give you a future and a hope for the KJV version to bring you to an expected end. He told Jeremiah, Before I knew you, before I formed you, I knew you. And he had he, he had anointed Jeremiah. So it is not enough for you to say, Oh, you know what? I am this. What do I need? I don't need God. What is that? I, I can do everything by myself. Uh nope. So this morning, I have the beautiful Singapore. That's what um, Rotimi calls people that sing very well. He says, I want Singapore. She's a songist. She's a, sorry, she's a singer, songwriter, business consultant. So they are the people that are in charge of money. They can, they can put your money in the right places for you. And she's in the America. People, people. <laughs> With Jesus' joy and life matters, let's make a big welcome to my guest. She said she's not put minister, but I have to put minister. I really got a put minister. People welcome Micaiah Jesus, and her full name is Olaya. Hi, I see this. Welcome, 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 welcome. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. How are you? Can everybody hear her clearly? I am still open and praying one day that we'll be able to add technology that will make everybody see the guests on Instagram around. But yes, 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 yes. Um, Show Laoye said, I am bringing the entire Laoye clan to Life Matters. And funny <laughs> enough, I did. You know, the funny thing is, I actually did not know that that was your name. <laughs> you know, after I sent you the invite, I sent you the topic, and I'm like, okay, I know let's go and do FBI work. And I saw, and I'm like, wait, okay, wait, wait. Oh, I did not know, people. Oh, so my this goodness. morning, I have the beautiful, the lit, the lightful, the lictable. Oh my God. <laughs> Too much English, but I have. <laughs> Minister Olulaoye, a.k.a. Makaya Jesus, a.k.a. Makaya, who we I listened to thank you, and I was doing some chaku chaku, you know, we had to, we had to we were moving our body, I'm moving our body. How are you doing, sis? 
Very well, thank you. How are you? Um, I am good. Um, today has been very, very. The last twenty four hours has been very eventful. You know, one thing I was going oh for yesterday, and I said, um, I was listening to a message the other day, and it said that joy is not when you um have everything figured out. You know, joy is when you don't have everything figured out. You're crying, you are in pain, you are doubting yourself, but you have that strength to still thank God and praise God, and that's what I was thankful for yesterday. That's very true. That's very true. I agree. Uh, so, 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 before we start the show, this, before we start the show, please, 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 tell me, tell me, tell me a tiny bit about yourself. Tell me a tiny bit about growing up for you. I know you grew up in, like, you were born into music. Like, I think the first chord you <laughs> did was to just pick a chord and just sing. So, <laughs> so, so, now, tell us. Tell us a little bit about your growing up. Tell us a little bit about... But before you tell us, do I go deep, 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 deep? What do you do to relax, to have fun, to chill, basically? I listen to music. We know. That's all I do. <laughs> I, I put this... I'm, I'm not kidding. So I cook. I cook and I listen to music. Um, and I... Fortunately, or unfortunately, depending on the day, I sit with my husband and we watch soccer. So I just learned to. <laughs> wow. I just learned you're, to watch you're soccer. You're the first woman I'm hearing that literally sits with her husband. Toya, I, I know you will know she can cook because you are <laughs> wearing me my own delicacy. Toya, see, or she know. I have you. I, I'm looking at you in 3D. 3D. But I, yeah, you're the, I think you're the first or second person I know that would tell me that she, she, she watches soccer with her husband. You know why? It, because I want to have peace. I just want to be happy. That's all. And, and I, I'm not kidding you. My husband lives on soccer. My husband eats soccer. My husband does not eat on Saturdays until he's done watching soccer. That's from 4 a.m. to maybe 1 p.m. And so... When he does that, I'm telling you, when I got married earlier, I, I was so angry. I used to fight him a lot because he just had only Saturdays and Sundays and he, he watched soccer. And I'm like, why? Why don't you spend time with me? You know, why? Where are the days when we used to go out together? Why is it soccer? <laughs> Oh so you know what I devised it, and, and honestly, I tell you, see, that's my big sister, and um, actually, she's the one I'll, I'll get to cooking. She actually made me like cooking for everybody, but we'll get there. Let me answer your question first. And so, <laughs> my husband, I, I decided one day, I was like, if I want to live well, I need to join him in I watching. I mean, Mr. Jumbo, that's my brother. I want to really, really sit and just watch soccer with him. And so I didn't know what the heck they were doing, but what I did was the first Saturday, I'll, I'll tell you exactly what happened. I sat with him next to him, and when I heard him say, yeah, I said, yeah, and mine would be louder. And he's like, ah, this guy's stupid. I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's true. You know, and I, I agreed with every single thing, and it got fun. You know, I had, he had this friend that, my husband is a Man U fan, and he had this friend that was a Chelsea fan. And so I was like, okay, how do I do this to make it fun for me? Mm -hmm. I supported Chelsea instead, whenever Chelsea and Man U were playing. So we'll call the guy, and the guy will say, well, we'll win. I'm like, yeah, oh, Chelsea, oh, blue, oh, Chelsea for life. Mm -hmm. Really, I didn't know what the heck they were doing. But then that's how, honestly, you just have to love everything. When you get on that altar, you, you really need to mean your vows. Mm. So you're loving mm. him for mm. who he is and don't try to change him. Initially, I was trying to change him mm. to be who I want him to be. But then men are not like that. You have to like him. You have to like everything about him. But I think you cannot change anybody. As only if no, the no. to the Holy Spirit and peer to the Lord. I am Timoni. Uh, Shay said, correct, lady. <laughs> <laughs> we, we cannot all change. See, like, the, the earlier we realize that as women, 
generally that you cannot change any man the work of change for a man is the work of the holy spirit yes ma'am women realize that the earlier they'll be off abusive relationships the earlier women realize that the earlier they will be off people that they are not what they're worth if, if that yes. is english because yeah. even when i look at this um what they call it this r kelly saga that is going on right now 90% of those girls were saying i wanted to change him i don't understand how you want to change another human being when you've not been able to change your own life thank that's you the, that's what they talk for today people thank let's you. not start today, <laughs> courage to start and and I, and I was sharing i was sharing with um my viewers last last week yes last week and i said one of the things that when when i was taking god's face for life matters this year and god said we're we're going to be doing on empowerment so whatever guest i'm bringing whatever person's going to talk sing do anything on the show has to empower the people and That's I was thinking of friends on like what topic should I read what like I, I was thinking of not something music just music because people will feel oh all, almost all your guests are music music people and I said no actually all, I have had you know people don't believe that I've had muslim on the show before and they're like wow. oh yeah I have and for me I I make my like you have to know your stand because I, I, and this takes me back to where the Bible says God give, he gave gifts unto all men. So there's some gifts that it might not be a Christian that has it, but God has given the person the gift. Like a lady was sharing her own story on how she was in um, a relationship that it, it was, the, the, I think we cried on the show that day and we prayed. And we're like, we pray for ladies that were struggling with things like that. And, and she shared a personal story. So for me, it's, I believe that um, the the platform is bigger than one person. For me, I, I think it's the at the end of the day or the other side of it, it's the impact that has to be made and proclaiming the name of Jesus because this is the kingdom we are in, the oh kingdom my. of our Lord, our Jesus. Now, yes. so when I when I had that topic in mind, I was like the courage to start, and it takes me back to people that actually are too scared to start anything basically like yeah they're they're stuck they're stuck because of one challenge or they failed but i don't want to start talking about it because i'm giving you the 100 percent to do it but before you go into the topic tell us something that we don't know about you and um a little bit about <laughs> your your growing up how was growing up like for you Oh my goodness, growing up was, I would say it, it was a privilege to grow up with my grandparents. Mm. So um, one of the reasons why I understand Yoruba so much is because though I was with my mom, but I was living with my grandparents as well. And I grew up, my mom had me, and I think age two or three, she went to drop me in Abelkuta. Ah, what part of Abelkuta? I, I lived in Ibarra, GRA. Oh, okay. I know Ibarra. Yes. She came, she just dropped me there and I didn't want to go back. And so she put me with my grandmother and I lived with my grandma until I came to the U.S. Uh, wow. <laughs> yes. And my mom too. I mean, I, I, my mom, so it wasn't like I lost, I lived with my mom, my grandparents as well, but my grandparents, my grandmother actually taught me how to make songs. Even till now, I just started learning how to write songs. The only song I wrote with a pen and paper is Tanito Lua. And it's on YouTube as well. Yeah. I've never, I never tried to write songs. I just form it. You know how we say form? I composed it in my head. And then I go to the studio and I think it's, well, I record it on my phone now that there's a phone and I sing it. And I remember when I was young too, I used to compose and then write, but I'll never sit down to say, I want to write a song. It just never comes because my grandmother will sit me on her bed and she'll tell me stories and then she'll make songs out of it. And that's, that's just how I've always been. And so, um, yeah, I lived with my grandparents, and that's why I understood Yoruba so much. I understand Yoruba so much. And it's not like I understand, like, 
Kapala B understand, but at least I I kind of understand. Those people um, in a different realm. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. I, I Governor D, welcome. I I I love the fact that I was getting spoiled. My mom spoiled me. I mean, when I was young, some I was always in the UK or US because my mom was in the Lions Club. And so every time they had the conventions. And so I'll come with her to the US or the UK and I'll go to school and I was getting so spoiled. I was so big. I was so, so big. My mom put me in Air Force Comprehensive School. It was a military school. Wow. And she put me there. <laughs> yes. So I, I did go to Air Force and that was where I got the training. I mean, in one term, in three months, I went from big, like big, to teeny tiny. I do have a picture on Facebook. I was, by the time I graduated, I was skinny, you know, because you had only one visiting day per uh, uh, term, and you had your midterm. There was one time they tried it. They said, you're not going home. Your midterm, your parents come visit you on Saturday, and that's it. It didn't work well, because I think two students died, and so they stopped it. But it was, it was fun. Now that I think about it, it was fun because... I was able to leave. Right now, as I'm speaking, I can leave. I can sit down and not eat for three days. I can sit down and not drink water and not eat for three days or four or five because of the training. My mom and I, I attribute it to my mother. She really, really did great by putting me in the right place. I needed to be mm -hmm. at the right time. Mm -hmm. So that being said, I got my bachelor's degree at um, the University of North Texas and my master's. And I was going in for a PhD, but I did not finish because it just didn't make sense to me. My mom still stays it's teasing. She says, I will translate. You will learn it. You know, because <laughs> when I got to, when I was doing my PhD, instead of me doing stuff like a regular PhD student, go to the bar on Friday, I actually would go to church for vigils and I would go and I was in the choir and I was a worship leader and I was you know how uh, Minister Jumbo was saying there are some pastors that you have the worship leader that has to go with pastor everywhere she has to sing before pastor I was that one where my pastor has to preach somewhere and then he has to take me and he's like sing sing covenant keeping God and everybody knew oh my goodness they're like a hey, sharp because everybody knew me and and he's like, yeah, we need the spirit to move. But it wasn't that I was the one with the best voice. Mm. It was that there was something inside of me that I did not know. Mm. And then I didn't even know. So growing up, mm. my grandmother put that songwriting into me. Mm. Inside of me, I knew that I wanted to sing. When I was young, my grandfather at 9 p.m. needed to listen to the news. I would stand in front of the TV. Is that 9 p.m. I want to sing? Then I would dance it, and he never complained for once. He never said, oh, stop, I need to watch the news. I would stand at 9 p.m. and do my performance. Then sometimes I'll go and take banana. I'll say I'm doing Holy Communion. My, my grandmother, she eats. <laughs> you know, it was so funny. But one day I wrote, I had this diary that my mom, I think it was my mom gave me, and I wrote in that diary, and then also it was when Fela was raining. So I used to go out, go and check my box. You know, I'm like, I want to be a Fela dancer and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But my <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm being that 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 that's come I'm... true. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> it did not come true. But you know what? I wrote in that diary, I will never forget. And I said, I want to sing. But my mom wants me to be a doctor and she wants me to you know but i do want to sing and this is what i want to do and i wrote it somehow my mom got hold of that diary and she read it till today i don't know where that diary is and that was it so i went to secondary school I was still singing i was in charge of the band the the gss1 band i'll teach them new songs they were the best in school everything was more of singing singing everywhere i went songs I came to the U.S. and when I was doing my Ph.D., something happened. Even though I used to go to sing all around. And my sister, Toya sees here, we were both in the choir. <laughs> we used to call it choir, then it was the worship team. But it was a large one. And she, 
she watched me. You know, she also loves to sing. She watched me grow. I think that the most important time of my life, going from a girl mm. to a lady, was with Toyo Siyoshinawa. Mm. And so a lot of things that I do still, she sees it in me. Mm. And she's like, oh my goodness, this is so me. But something happened. Mm. I started dreaming. Mm. I dreamed that I was singing in front of people. It might be small groups. It might be large groups. Mm. I'll dream that I was teaching them songs. Mm. And I was doing my PhD and everything was fine. Then I lost my dad in 2013. Mm. And it went from me losing my dad to things just going a wire for me. So I, try, I managed to survive from March 2013 to December my best friend got married in Nigeria in December. And so Wilson Joel is my very good friend. And I sent him a message in August. I said, Wilson, I'm coming to Nigeria and I'm coming for my best friend's wedding. But I want to record my songs. He's like, oh, you're coming to Nigeria. Do you need a place to stay? And anybody that knows Wilson Joel, I don't know if you know him. He, he's a very great, you do know him. <laughs> yeah, very great producer, but he's a very great person. He's like, do you need somewhere to stay? Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, no, I'm fine. I just need to record. And he told me, this is the price because I have to pay the guys. And you know how producers are. And uh, I was like, no problem. Luckily for me, here is what happens when God calls you. Mm. He makes a way. I was a PhD student. No job, just school. So you know, as a PhD student, I was a teaching assistant. I was barely making anything to survive life was good because i did have funding to pay my rent and whatnot but then i was not rich and music is not cheap so i was like god mm. i said god um, help me if this is you make a way mm. i'm going to nigeria i want to record my songs because the only producer i knew then was um Dari david Will sing Joel, and actually, Dari David. It was um, my friend Johnny Praise that gave me Dari's contact. I didn't even know him then. He's my big brother now, and I was like, "Brother Dari, I need to do a song, you know." And he gave me the price. I'm like, "Ah, this is too expensive." He's like, "Well, I don't know if you have a good voice." I'm like, I was like, "Ah, no, I'm not going with him anymore." <laughs> but anyway, back to the story. <laughs> um, I went to Nigeria, mm. and. I, I sang, the first song I sang when I got to the studio, my mom dropped me at the studio and she told Wilson, she said, Wilson, I'll be right back in an hour. I need to hear something good. Mm. My mom, I'm, I'm going to say I'm from the Laoye clan. So you know how Sister Nikki Laoye was saying that her um, grand uncle was the talking drummer. He's my grandfather. Wow. So apart from him, his wife, who is my grandmother, is Flora Laoye, and she was a great pianist. She was so good. She was a great pianist. My mom is an actress. My mom, um, <laughs> actually, one time I was reading about my mom. I just said, let me go online, even though I didn't think there was anything about my mom. She used to act with Wale Inka. And so I read online that my mom and a team of people went with Wale Shoenka and they acted on Broadway. This is the Broadway that everybody dreams of going, like if you're in theater arts. Yeah. And they acted there, and she, she, she was um, Chief Coco's wife. There's this series in Nigeria called Coco Clothes. Oh, yeah, yeah, you've heard it before. My mom was Mama Bolanle, so she was the wife of Chief Coco. So we call him Chief Coco, but they didn't know where he came from. He was from Coco Close. Wow. Yeah, and, and so I got to respect the fact that the, the, the gift came both maternal and paternal. My father's side, my mom also, she, 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 was, a, she was a presenter. She was um, in music, but not like me. She was just in it for theater arts because in those days you have to have a good voice. You have to know how to sing, how to act, how to do things. And so the performance 
for me came from my mother. Mm. The thinking was from God and my father's side. Mm. That's how I see it. So, that's how, yeah, that's how it all started. That's how Makaya started. I came, recorded all my songs, uh, and I was supported. Brother Dario David advised, he's a great mentor, you know. He advised me big time. Wilson was there for me. Wilson was the one that said, do this song, make sure that you do an international standard. I want all your lyrics on your CD. Make sure you have something, an insert, a leaflet, writing all your lyrics because you do a lot of your rap songs, translate it. So Wilson was that push for me. But Adara David was that push for me. So you'll see your she know what. She's listening now. And it's not just because you're here. So you'll see you built me as a woman. I mean, she, she's been there for me as a big sister. But I did, we lived together at some point. My mom, so it's, it's, it's just not Makaya. It's people all around mm. me. And that's, that's me. That's who I am. Uh, um, so w would you say that, um, because if you look at the current start when it comes to music, you st I, I love where you, the angle you started from and that music is not cheap. Like, no, it's not. <laughs> music is not cheap. At least bulk of the guys that are doing stuff now, most of them are... are if you ask them now we in Nigeria they are working in dollars you hear two thousand dollars one thousand five hundred dollars three thousand I took dollars to Nigeria and I watched Wilson Joel pay those guys in dollars mm. I watched him because I, I recorded five songs Tami told me I was not even supposed to be recorded that's the only song I wrote and it was out of tears because I lost God showed me. I mean, I, I went to Nigeria. I lost everything. My funding, I was a business development manager at an IT firm. My funding from school, my TA work, and also my, my job as a business development manager. And so I just started crying that night, like 2 a.m. And I lost it. And that was the song. My mom came to pick me to the airport. She's like, you need to record this song. So on my way, I said, Wilson, please, I, I need to come record before I go to the airport. That was where I, I did the Tanito Lua. But for all the songs, I watched him. As a matter of fact, I watched him pay in dollars. The money was not even enough. Which I thought I was taking a lot of thousands. The money was not a lot. He had to pay with Naira. Hmm. He paid, so I can, I can always say, he's not here right now, but I need to say it. And I will never, there's something you just never forget. I can always say, Wilson was my first producer. A lot of people say, why is it that you're not showing Makaya? Every single time, you're always saying, Wilson, Wilson, Wilson. Because I saw him mm. sow into my life. Mm. Not all producers can sow. There are only two producers that can sow. There's, there's this producer called Derry Whiter. You know, he has sown into my life as well, even though we fought before we started being friends. But Wilson, I watched him pay with thousands of dollars to this instrumentalist. Mm. And the money was not enough. He still went again and took his own naira and started paying. Mm. So why am I saying this? No, it's not cheap. And, mm. and when I came to the U.S., for some reason, Derry tells me, it's like, well, over here, people pay per hour. Which I understand, Dari David is awesome. Like, he's also not cheap because he's a very good producer. And I didn't know that. I personally thought that I was going to go to the studio and take 150 or $200 and get a song. <laughs> that was when I was about to start. <laughs> I'm serious. But then he was like, no, that's not how it works. I didn't realize that until I went again to Nigeria and I saw how much thousands I had to spend. Mm. So, people look at my videos, they see that I, I had to rent a whole airplane to choose my, my, my most recent video, and that's Kilo Day on YouTube, and they're like, how much? And I said, well, if you're going to go and rent that airplane, it's $52,000 to rent per day. That doesn't mean I spent it. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes. That doesn't mean, and, and honestly, maybe you're the third person or the second, apart from my husband. Yeah, you're the second person that knows the price. Yeah, but that does not mean I spent that money because of the favor of God. When God sends you, he makes a way. Mm. When I came back from Nigeria, I was broke like God knows what to call it. And I didn't, okay, 
the songs are here. God, now you sent me. There's no money. What I what am I going to do? Mm. Do you know that he sent someone to finish it up again? How? He said, for months, I was just home mm. and I was listening to my CD. That was me. I was just listening to my songs because there's nothing. I have to make sure that I print out, you know, the jacket and, and the cover. I have to mm. do a photo shoot. I have to make sure that I, I present myself well. I should have a website. I should, I needed money. I didn't have anything. I already lost my funding. I lost everything. God, what do I do? Hmm. All of a sudden, he said, go ahead and put Oya Dancia as a slideshow on YouTube and share it to people around you. So I want That's to ask a question in that light. Um, you lost your funding. You like Literally, you went from the girl that was poor, that was always taking care of everything was... Like your your life was like on this kind of balance, and and a lot of people people are always scared, especially when they lose people, they lose things, they give up. And for me, it's the natural man to give up and 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 not think about um like everything be damned. I'm just gonna go ahead and just leave everything. I don't care and all that. But when you lost everything, how did you how did you start up again because there's a difference <laughs> between you just you know the, the difference between oh i've started and i got stuck in the middle and okay people will help me you get that kind of thing this is <coughs> you are just about to launch your career you're just about to go into the ministry it and wasn't even a career yet it wasn't it was just do as i say mm. god takes you step by step mm. <coughs> excuse me he takes you step by step he makes sure that he makes provision you know how we do the lord's prayer our lord's yeah. prayer our father what them give us this day our daily bread mm. why didn't jesus teach us give us this day our lifetime bread mm. why mm. didn't jesus that's why i laugh when people say i have enough money to last me and my generations to come i laugh at them because what they have is their daily bread mm. as a business consultant i have clients Starting from people that have only five thousand dollars to start a business to over five hundred million dollars. Mm. I have clients. What you have is your daily bread. Mm. What God has given you today is your daily bread. He expects you mm. to use that daily bread. You might not take the money from your account. You might mm. not take everything from your account, but plan with what you have, because mm. He's expecting you to do something based on the destiny he made purpose for you he made a plan he called you as a christian we're all called to ministry so when things go down how was i able to get up there were some days that i did not eat as a matter of fact i remember clearly i had there was one day someone came to visit me i'll tell you this story it's funny but it's very true i was a phd student it was not easy it was not easy, nothing. It was not, my mom was not there. I was living in, 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 in a very expensive apartment all by myself. And a friend came to visit me with another friend. They used to see me in church. You know, I was dressed so beautiful, everything. People thought, oh, she has no problem. I didn't have a car. So people used to give me a ride to church. And this lady, these two, they're from Francophone African countries. They came to visit. And she was like, I want some water. I said, get it in the fridge. Keep in mind. I used to fetch tap water, my own faucet, and just put it in the fridge and drink because there was no food. Sometimes I'll say I'm going on fast. I'm going on a three-day fast or a five-day fast, not eating anything. Yes, I'm, I'm real now because a lot of people don't know. We're going to get to that. I know you, you will probably ask, so I will not say everything. But I'm real. And I'll say I'm, I'm, in a, I'm on a fast. So she came, she opened my fridge. All she found in the whole refrigerator was my keg of water. It was white. Like, you know when you have a brand new fridge? Freezer white, fridge white, kind of white. And she, she closed that fridge and she went back. She's like, oh, okay. All right, we're done. Bye. And that was a Saturday. On Sunday, this lady said, 
I saw a church. I was like, oh, so where are you going? She said, oh, I just want to go real quick to Walmart. I'll see you next week or blah, blah, blah. She left. I heard a knock on my door a few hours later. These two girls again. They're not girls. They're ladies. They're my girls. Though, but they're, they're like my friends, even though they're older than me. But you know how your friends are your girls. Yeah. They came with food, cooked food. Like she had different versions of jollof rice. Different versions. She she had the the, the francophone. She she's from Ivory Coast. She had her own coconut fried rice. She had different things: chicken, different things, milk, cereal, so much. Sister Anu, I fell on the floor and I cried for almost an hour, if not more, hmm. worshiping God, because I did not have a way to eat. Hmm. So when people see me and they see, they, they, Makaya, yeah, people love me. I have my people. They see me, they see an airplane in your video. Or they see you use drones and they see you hire these people playing violins in your in another video. And they see and they think all is well. They see you dressed well. They do not know your story. Mm. They don't know anything about you. Mm. And you don't have time to tell them your story. Mm. The only thing you have time for is to encourage them when they're down. Mm. To show them that God has a plan and purpose for you. The reason why, why is it voodoo that Jesus just went to the boat and told um, um, Andrew and Peter, follow me. They just left their, their, their boats and they, they went with him. Is it voodoo? No. Mm. If you study your Bible very well, and Matthew that was a tax collector, collector he just followed jesus said come follow me and he just left everything and followed hmm. because those people needed to know their plan and purpose for their life hmm. jesus was already popular he was already doing his miracles people were already followed anyway hmm. so you can imagine right now if i did not have any plan or purpose for my life i'm confused and let's just say joyce meyer for example just says oh look, follow me you think I won't leave everything I'm doing and follow her? Hmm. That's what plan and purpose is. I knew from the dreams I used to have that he called me. Hmm. I remembered my, uh, my mom, it took, and, and, and people usually say, don't say this story, but I realized that every time I say it, it brings healing to someone. Hmm. My, and my mother, 13th child, 13th, and I'm the only one that said, yes. 13th pregnancy. They were all either stillborns or, or miscarriage or whatnot. Hmm. Yeah? But people don't know. Hmm. So I knew that he had a purpose for me. How can a God that I serve tell me to go to Nigeria and record songs? I'm listening to these songs. They are touching me. My friends are listening. It's, it's touching them. And there's no money to do any video. There's no money to do any... Do you launch it or finish up? You know, when he said, put this thing on YouTube, I obeyed. And I started sharing it. I shared it to this pastor. He doesn't know me from Adam. He doesn't know anything about me. I said, here's my video. So I just wanted... I hope he blesses you. I don't think he finished watching that video. Because it was a slide... Just a slide show of my pictures. Just with my songs in the background. He said, where's the CD? I said, ah, sir, there's no money. <laughs> you know, he said, how much more do you need? I said, about $3,800. He said, okay, I have a program. I'm coming to Houston from Maryland. I'm coming on, on Tuesday. No, I'm coming on Friday. Hmm. And that was on a Tuesday. Me, can you meet me in Houston? I said, I live in Dallas, sir. He said, well, take the bus. Just meet me somehow. Okay, just so pass, I, pass on that testimony. Um, and the good thing when you're starting up is to also one of the things that I've learned from a story is to surround yourself with people that also will push you. I Andrew Bello, I Peter Sings, I Dakwa King, and welcome people. It is very important that we we're able to share our life. You know, it's it's not don't just sit down and say, Oh, I'll start, I'll start. Take that one step. One of the things that I wrote and I should said is plan with what you have. Don't wait till you have 30 billion, you know. And I'm, 
I, I, one of the things that I'm, I'm just sharing with people before you came in was one of the things that I, I, I in what you said was plan with what you have. I noticed that people want to wait till they have that big money. Oh, until I have 30 songs, until I have 20 songs, until I have three, three. <laughs> start with what you have. It's, it doesn't hurt to start small. Yeah, our story might be different. She might have had support of her mom and this and that, and you might never have that support. But the point is, even when you don't have that support, because a lot of people, and I've, and I've spoken to loads of producers. I was talking to one of my very close brothers um, or during the course of the night, my neighbor, it was their morning, um, and it was in the Netherlands. And he said that most people, what they do is just to come around you to take advantage of you. They yes. know that they don't have that much. Like I, I remember two two years ago. Yes, I had this conversation with a couple of. I don't, I don't like. I don't want to do name call or name drop it. <laughs> but I had a conversation with a couple of producers that are really, really top producers in Nigeria, and that is super of the things they said. And one, one, one particularly told me said, "I know. Don't worry. You don't have to rush it. When you can afford yeah. my price, I'm sure that we we'll work yeah, together." Do. And it didn't say yeah, out of do. it didn't say out of oh it was one super expensive that I can never afford, but it was saying it out of right now you're starting small, start with that small thing you have. If you have hundred thousand, there are good producers out there. They might not be super famous, but if they work mm -hmm. with what you have, this is us going from the angle of start and um, the the courage to start when it comes to ministry. We're going to use this other app to talk about the correct stuff when it comes to business. And because you're a business consultant, you're going to share with us tips that people can use when it comes to starting up a business. But we'll run, we'll run around the starting up when it comes to a ministry. You know, a lot of people want that big thing. So they want to be Micaiah right now, but don't want to go through what Micaiah had gone through 10 years ago. <laughs> Do you understand? Like they want to, oh, I, I really love, I, I really love uh, Samuel Koso. But you, we remember with the Welu Welu and all the times where it was dark and it was slim. And, but nobody wants to oh. go through that part. You know, I was talking to, oh my God, I can't remember any of this, but I was talking to someone during the course of the week and he was sharing with me how, well, while the, I think, no, I think it was Minister, was it Minister Jumbo last week that was saying that then they would have to like, go through rigorous rehearsals, go sing in different places, like without thinking of one money or whatever. And I was talking to another person that is not even in the music industry, but was sharing with me that how the person started that when he wants to go and see his client, it will trek. And I've seen different people like on stage at this show that people will have to donate money or, or give up, someone will give them money where they were going to work and they walked for over probably 10 to 15 kilometers just to get to work. But you see them not making millions and millions. You never want to hear their story. When they start doing it, or like as we are doing the 10-year challenge, they tell you, oh, let's look at the future. But you got to thank God for what has happened in the past <laughs> and have a better perspective for the future. So you were sharing us a story on on the pastor that wanted you to come to uh, come to um, from Dallas. Yes, so I, I packed my bags and I took the mega bus and I went to his program hmm. with um, my auntie because number one, this pastor is just if I added I think I was what I added him on Facebook long time before then, and my mom used to listen to his call. They had this prayer line and thousands of people like. Over a thousand people will call from Nigeria, UK. Anyway, so I sent him. I just sent him like every other pastor, everybody else. And I didn't know him. So I was like, okay, let me take precaution. And let me tell my auntie to please follow me to his uh, crusade. So that uh, <laughs> in case anything happens, they know who I am. <laughs> anyway, so I went there. And immediately they finished. I, I went. A lot of people were on the line. So I stayed, I, I made sure I was the last person. And I went, I introduced myself. Well, he, sir, this is so, 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 and so. He said, oh, okay, wow, well, it's nice to meet you. All right, good. Call me on, uh, go back to Dallas. Call me on Tuesday. I was like, okay. 
He, this, he, this is not the man that said I should come. Why did I have to come all the way to Houston and go back to Dallas? Hmm. Anyway, I was like, yes, sir. Trust me, I didn't put my mind to it. The Bible says that woe to he that puts his mind and dedicates Trust his me. heart to man. Hmm. Exactly. So if you put your, the trust, you have to make sure that if you put your mind, if I'm putting my mind to you, on you, saying it is you that is going to do it. I didn't trust in him. What to that man that has confidence in man? What to that man that trusts in man? Mm. He said, I should come. I came. He mm. said, I should go. I went again. On Tuesday, I gave him a call. He said, send me your account details. Mm. I did. How much is it? I said about three thousand eight hundred dollars, sir, hmm. to print and do because I still had a lot more to do. I kid you not, he sent that money to me. You know hmm. why? You know he's an angel. Hmm. Not only did he send it, that was you know Chase. You can always just trans transfer. He he transferred it to me. Hmm. My graphic designer made a very very bad mistake after I had already put in the order for the CDs to be printed. And then I called those guys that were printing. They told me there's nothing we can do. We already did everything. You have to pay again. So they said I needed to pay. Was it 350 or 500? Hmm. I said, okay, God, I've paid the money this man gave me. Where do I find 500 again? I was sitting. Two weeks later, the pastor said, ah, where's the city? I'm like, sir, my graphic designer made a mistake. They said I should pay again. He said, okay, how much is it? I told him, I think it was $350. He, didn't know this man. he said, okay. I didn't know him. Hmm. He said, okay, now I hope someone is listening because I want them to know how angels work. Hmm. He said, okay, I've sent $500 to your account. Send it to them right away. I said, thank you, sir. I sent the money again. Then they printed. I set up my, I said, okay, now I've printed God. How do I launch the CD? I called on my pastor, and he, the Lord said, go on a 21-day fast. So I did as he said. And um, actually, Toya Siyoshinawa's husband was also featuring in one of my songs. So he came from Houston with Toya my sister, and my pastor and my church members, and they rallied, they rallied around. I had some people that didn't even know me that backed me up. I had Songi. She, she's a recording artist, too, and she goes all over the country now. I'm so proud of her. And uh, they all backed me up. You know, we had rehearsals. I was frustrated. And they didn't even look at my own mind. They didn't look at me. They didn't look at my bad behaviors. Because I used to be so angry. The Lord God was the one that is the one that has taken me to this point. The writer is here now. Mm -hmm. And I do some work with him. But I still told him last week. I, I reminded him in front of my husband. I said, do you remember when I cursed you out? Because I, I was just like that. I, I, I was this kind of person that I used to just talk. Hmm. Whatever was on my mind, I would just stay out. Hmm. That was me. But God had to break me. Hmm. He literally crushed me like this. Hmm. He broke me when I started ministry. So yeah, hmm. angels usually would see you to the end. This man sponsored me till this CD was... I had a website, I had the CD, I, had, I launched my CD. He didn't even come. He still sent his own donations again. And that was it. He came to Dallas, told me to come and sing and minister. And that was it. Till so now, if I call, he has even changed his number. Even if I send him a message, he will respond. But sometimes he, he could send a message and just say, oh, my daughter, God bless you. But that's it. That's it. That's angels. Hmm. That's, that's all. Why am I saying this? There are some people that have been called. I believe we all have a purpose. The Bible in Matthew, the book of Matthew, Jesus said what? He said, go. Just go. That was the first thing. Go and make disciples. Mm. And teach these disciples, teach these new disciples what I have taught you. Mm. Everybody has been called to ministry. My business consulting, which you said we're going to talk about, is ministry for me. Mm. Some people don't have to sing. You don't have to sing. It's not everybody's. I've seen some people have made mistakes. They've been called to sing. They've been called to sing. 
And because the singing is not yielding as much as they want, even though they've made a lot of money from it, mm. guess what? They're going to become pastors. Mm. And then they are going on the altar and telling people, you have to give deliver us from evil uh, uh, offering or something will happen to you. Mm. God called you to sing. When you were singing, the whole world knew you. They are calling you all over the world. And you said he called you to me. If God called you to be a pastor, you don't have to tell people and, 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 and what do you call it? Put fear in their hearts that they will die if they don't give their offering. Where do you want them to find thousands of dollars from? You know, so it's very, very annoying. At some point, I had to tell them, well, you're a liar. That's me. That's Micaiah. Because it's, it's just, it's really, really annoying. When God calls you, he does not call you to put fear. Mm. Jesus mm. said, go and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Mm. That is your work. Mm. Whether I think, me, I'm, I'm baptizing with the Holy Spirit, because Holy Spirit is the one that is following me. Whether I put water on you, I'm baptizing you with water in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But I can never, I'm not supposed to come and say, deliver me, deliver us from evil offering, give $150, $1,000, $200. Mm. Why? What world? Where is this world turning into? Mm. We're in the days where men are seekers of their own self, self-centeredness. Mm. Days mm. when, you know what? You know, since last year, I read the Bible in one year. I thought mm. I read the whole Bible. Not until today. You want to hear this real quick. Mm. You know, Jesus said something. I'm sending you, in the book of my, was it Matthew? He said, I'm sending you a sheep among wolves. Be wise as a serpent. The next one, I'm sending you a sheep. I'm sending you among sheep. Be humble as a dove. You know the third thing that a lot of people don't know and they don't read to us in church? He said, I'm sending you for myself. Do not be self-centered. It's in your Bible. Hmm. Do not do my work with your own self-centeredness. It's there in the Bible. So if you see any pastor saying, deliver us from evil offering, $1,000, this, da, 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 $200, Jesus does not collect money to bless you. He blesses you, it is free will. You know one thing I've noticed, and, and for those that have been with Life Matters for the last one year, they will know that I preach it every time. Know the scriptures for yourself. And look at yes, the scriptures for you. Tell us, he said the gospel is free. I, I know the gospel is free is free because we're not making a payment. But for me, the gospel is not free. Because no, it's Christ, not. Christ paid that price. And he paying the price for us all. It's very important that we, we, um, we understand the purpose behind that sacrifice. And that's the thing. People lack understanding when it comes to the Christian race. And um, people say church hurts. People have hurt them in church. And, 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 and I, don't, I don't blame them because that's their understanding. Because I, I remember that I had church hurt too. But the Holy Spirit had to tell me that it's not about this place. It's about the bigger picture. And I was, and I, and I was sharing yesterday. Um, la- two days ago on the online conference that I was on and I was sharing with the people and I told them that the thing about it is like on your on your journey to purpose it's never smooth because and this is my perfect illustration the courage to start doesn't mean that Jesus is not on the boat of your life I'll give you two examples yeah, yeah. Jesus was in the boat when the storm came but what Jesus mm-hmm. wanted to know was the faith of his people. So you can live with Jesus, eat with Jesus, sleep in Jesus' house, eat from the same bowl Jesus eats from. But if you don't have faith in Jesus, you're wasting your time. Now, it was, an, it was, in, the, it was in the boat. And storm arose. Now, with all the rain, all the bang, 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 that the disciples have gotten, you expect them to stand by <laughs> so in the name that, that is a you expect them to, to decree. No. They began going out and said, oh my God, where is master? Oh, master is sleeping. And in my mind, <laughs> but you have that authority. But what did they have? They didn't have understanding. And that's what's exactly. in our generation. Now, number two, Peter 
walked with Jesus. At least we knew that. When Jesus said, come, when I was on the sea, and just said, walk on it. When, the, when, 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 when did Peter start sinking? When he began to look down at that problem. Yeah. And that's yeah. the problem we all have. We want to start. We want to start that business. We want to start that, that ministry. We want to start that, that foundation. But what's the problem? It is that you're looking at the fear. The moment you start seeing the... You know, some people will say, think of the worst. And it is a very terrible syndrome. Never think of the worst. Always think of the best. Because the God that created you gives you his best day in, day out. He gives you his best always. God gives you his best and what he expects from you is to give him your best and believe in him and have faith in him and know his word for yourself so that when someone comes when someone comes and tells you that you want to buy your grace for 5,000 naira you tell the person <laughs> that Jesus has paid that price for me oh my goodness but because we are not Christians we want the quick Put hot water inside it and drink the hot soup. We don't want to go through the process <laughs> of fasting. See, you telling us that God told you to fast for 21 days. So who can fast for 30 minutes? But they want that See. encounter you get when you go on the altar, but they don't want to make that sacrifice. Now, going to the... Doesn't to the work that way. Of, going to the part... Back, part of startups i know that you do a lot of startups for different businesses now what are the things one has to put in place when you are starting up for a business okay so first of all and, and one of the things that i usually tell people which i know a lot of people on this show would probably know is we know it's good to have business but business is not for everyone mm. ministry is business is a business. So you handle it like a business. Now, secular business. When you want to start a business, make sure that it's something that you've been called to do. Why is it that the offer the rice seller in Agege is selling more than offer the rice seller in Victoria Island? Hmm. Because people in Victoria Island do not need of other rice. Mm. They want tush food. Very few of them will go to Agege to eat their of other rice. Mm. Why can't a Bolisla be in Ikoi mm. or Leki? Mm. Make sure that you are looking for problems. A true entrepreneur and business owner has to look for problems. Mm. Until, until we find out how to do business, we should not just go into... I see a lot of people, they see people doing Mary Kay. Everybody runs to Mary Kay. Doing Revlon. Oh, everybody goes there. Uh, you see, you know, make sure you look for a problem. If you are in the environment where maybe the water is not clean and you have to go and get bottled water, look and do your research. How can I purify the water from my tap? Hmm. That's look for the problem. So, so it means if that, you're in a, so it means that you you have to make sure that your business is a solution for people's mm, problems. Yes, but then we always tell people make sure your business is a solution for people's problems. Issue is people just look for the solution. That's why I, as a business owner and also a business consultant, I always tell people look for a problem. Hmm. There are two different things. If I, I can look for a solution for anything, I can look for a solution right now and say, well, um, the roads should be in marble and all roads should just be in, uh, should be with red sand because red sand will help me get to where I'm going faster. Hmm. That's my own version of solution. And I'll come with theory and I'll just put everything together. Can you imagine coffee as, as crazy and I won't say deadly, but very dangerous as coffee is for pregnant, pregnant women in the U.S. Coffee, they found solution for coffee hmm. without looking for problems. Hmm. So why am I saying that? As a business owner, you have to look for a problem. Hmm. When you look for a problem, then you have to research how you can fix the problem. 
if everybody is going to Mary Kay, Mary Kay, whoever did it, thanks to the person because I use some of their products, makes me look good. But then the person already found the problem. That's where there are some people that have acne that need to hide it, so they need to have concealer. There are some people that have pimples, they need to hide it, they need to have concealer. There are some people that just need to look good. They found that problem and they found a solution. And other people are feeding on that solution. So really what you are doing is that you are helping the person solve the solution to their own problem. Hmm. You find your own problem. Mr. Jumbo last week said, stay in your lane. When you're in your lane, you're able to see. Hmm. You can imagine driving on the highway. If you go and you are looking at, you have a six-lane highway. You're looking at the, the sun on the third lane, even though you're on the first lane, you will not see the building in front of you. Hmm. Hmm. Mm. So that's why I said the problem first. That way, when immediately you find a problem, trust me, you have a solution. Mm. Because there is something else that I like to look at. When you find a problem, you retrace your step back to how you found the problem. Mm. That's the solution. Mm. All right, I want to take my kids to school. And then I know that I have to be at work at 8 a.m. in the morning. But school also opens at 8 a.m. in the morning. So I need someone to help me take my kids to school. But then it's so expensive for me to get someone to help me take my kids to school. What was, what, what, what did, what was the first thing I needed to do? I want to take my kids to school. How about if I found other mothers that want to take their kids to school but they have to be at work? Well, if I charge them so much money, they wouldn't mind because they are making a lot anyway. Let me set up the company that will take their kids to school. Mm. He just retraced the step of finding that problem. Mm. A lot of business consultants will not tell you that because they want you to come back to them. Mm. So when I tell people that, I, I, okay, I found a problem, very good example. I moved to Irving, Texas not too long ago, and I'm used to going to networking events, but there's no networking events for business owners in Irving, Texas for whatsoever reason. So I went online on meetup.com and I set up my own networking event. I kid you not, within two, three days, I had, what, within a week, I had over 50 people. I had to pay extra to expand. Yeah. And I told them, I said, bring your $1. All I need is $1 and your business cards. So you share your business cards with other people at the event. And I know that it costs me money to keep up the page anyway. So I'm not going to pay for that fixing the problem because they are going to help me pay. So you can imagine 20 people or 10 people every Saturday paying $1. And I'm paying only that $9.99 per month. But we have four Saturdays in a month. So even if things are so bad and only 10 people come every Saturday, I've made $40 that month. And I only had to pay $9.99. Hmm. Because I saw a problem and there was nobody else to fix it. So I fixed it myself. And now I'm making profit from that problem. Hmm. Hmm. So, that is business. So I've gotten a, a pro I've, I've seen the problem. I have okay. seen the solution. How do I start up okay. this business? Good. When I, can I use the Bible as well? I know we're talking about business, but I, everything from a kayak consulting, for example, I use the Bible to answer because mm. that's my number one handbook. Mm. The Lord told Moses, what is in your hand? He had just a staff. Stretch out your staff. So it's, the power of God is what stretched that divided the Red Sea. But it was Moses that performed that miracle. Because he had a staff. It's not God that came. It's, the Bible says Moses was the one that performed the miracle. No matter how small you have, mm -hmm. you need to learn to start small. We all want to be big. But then, why you have a home? Why can you not start from your home? Mm -hmm. If you're sewing, buy a sewing machine, as small as it is, and start sewing from your home. There's a way, thank God for technology. There's a way you can do the background. 
from your photos that it will make it look like you're in the office. Mm. But really, you are in your bedroom. Mm. Even if you have one self-contained, I'm not saying studio apartment or one bedroom apartment, self-contained like Nigeria face me and face you. There's a way you can always, we call it packaging, right? But you have to package yourself. Yeah. You have to make sure that people see you're good. If, if you go, when I was doing my website, I just, I was like, you know what? I want someone to come and see my website and see that I'm good at what I do. If I'm marketing websites, let them come and see what I've done. Now, if you go on Makaya Consulting website, I built that website myself. Hmm. The guy on my team that builds website just finished revamping the UPS website. But I built Makaya Consulting website for myself. And I made sure that even though I was a one-man business then, if you go on there, you would think 50 people work for me. First, I made sure that all the people on that website were people that would attract every nationality. And then, me to our CEO was me, this black child. But that's just how you have to package yourself. It's not lying. Okay, so, it's called so presentation. Let's, let's, let's break down packaging because... We live in a world where everybody's packaging. So this is my real cheek. <laughs> this is my real cheek. This is my real nose. This is a wig. This is earring. Oh my goodness. Like I I, mm -hmm. I this is these are my real lashes. This is my real brow. I didn't add anything to it. <laughs> now, no, the reason why I'm saying this, and, and, and I'm just being hundred percent the reason why I'm saying this is because <clears throat> we live in a world where people present everything to be perfect. And no. I hear what you're saying, and I want to I wanna add this to what you're saying, is that don't compare your startup with someone else's. Now, this is why. No. When I started, when I started with Life Matters, I had just one phone. Now, the phone was, if you look at my first video, oh my Jesus, I, I, I almost feel bad. You know, <laughs> <laughs> the lightning was bad. The 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 phone was shaking it was falling down everything was everything was everywhere and that was how i started now it evolved that if i see this deal of ten dollars on sale i buy it if i see this deal of twenty dollars on sale i buy it little by little by little by little and that was how it all came together that even though this is not the perfect background of what i want for my for, for for the show because I, I want it to be bigger than this, but this evolved from the life matters thing that people were like, oh my god, it's so nice. We love what you did with the, the lecturing thing and everything. It was on sale for $18. There you go. Do you understand? And I, and I said, let me use the opportunity to get it. Let me use the opportunity to get this. Now people don't want to do that. They want to do like, let's go back to your initial story. When you start ministry, they want that kind of thing where someone will come and give them three thousand six hundred dollars and buy it long. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? So don't don't look at yourself as oh, I'm starting too small. There's nothing as too small. And I love what you said. No matter how well you package, package yourself well and be good at what you do, so that you don't disgrace yeah. your whatever it is you're packaging. You, I think that's why it becomes like line where you cannot do it but you are claiming that you know how to do it oh we do all types of yeah. care for everybody we do this and the person comes and say oh please i wanted to fix my extension they're clippings and you're like um the thing is the thing i used to do the clippings are not available now you start lying but let them know mm -hmm. i can do braids fixing and retouching well and this be very specific so, for example, my consulting company, that's why I said I did my website. But the guy that does my website, I usually tell my clients, I'm not the one that will do your website. Why? Because the fact that I did my own doesn't mean that I can do yours well. Mm, mm. But it's I do know someone that has been sued. It's very true. It's like tying daily. People that know <laughs> I don't know why I know how to tie gilly because on my own air, I can do whatever style I want to do. But oh my I goodness. I want to do the same thing on your head. If it's not perfect, I will let you, like, it is true to 
you're not selling yourself short, but let people know that they are not running at a loss. I don't. So, that's the thing. But then for Makaya Consulting, all of my services, loans, accounting, music, music, and I have a music analyst, which is Derry Whiter, because he actually went to school for it. Hmm. You know, that's what he studied in the U.S. Mm. So that's why I put on my, on my, I don't know if you ever saw the video I put on my page. It's the only one I can go. You say, check your accent, check your diction, check this, because that's what he studied. Mm. So for my non-profits, I got the best accounting. I cannot do it. I didn't study that. I studied international politics. So mm. what do I do? I actually introduce you to the person on my team who is a CPA. Mm. He is a certified public accountant. He was trained for it. Mm. For websites, the guy that does my website has done websites for me and actually does websites for other successful people and actually just re revamped the UPS website. For events planning, the lady on my team, she actually got awards. So her events... For some reason, I don't know if it's just the blessing of God. I know it's the blessing of God. Her events have been featured on um, Fox News and Hallmark Channel. She's really good. So I got the best of the best of the best. So I'm not going to do it. Afford it now, and that's where people come in. Oh, you, you're telling me I should start my business. I should come and do my website. I should come and do this. It's expensive. Oh, you're telling me to start up my ministry, but the, the producer is telling me one thousand five hundred dollars. I don't pay one thousand five hundred naira. How do I navigate myself to working with my purse and still getting quality for the job? What is in your hand? Mm. What is in your hand? You want to go into ministry, you don't have the money. Good. Sing at church. Mm. Call churches and, and tell them, well, I'm a minister and so, 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 and so, and I sing. And I would love to come and bless, you know, be a blessing. Just introduce yourself. Sometimes just go for events. Mm -hmm. Whoever has heard you sing at church before can invite you up on stage. You don't know where your miracle will come. Mm -hmm. Everybody's miracle comes in a different way. The God that we serve, we call him omnipotent. That means he can do all things in different places at the same time. Are you trying to tell me that the person that had a CS, because they had a CS at this hospital, also everybody that comes there has to have a CS? No. Are you trying to tell me that the person that makes their husband at church, that means everybody has to meet their husband at church, you know? Are you trying to tell me that the person that got rich as the millionaire from lottery, everybody has to be rich by playing lottery? No. The God that we serve is very specific. That's why I said, don't listen to any pastor that says, come and pay $5,000 so your life can be 25 years extra. Hmm. Because the, the widow of Zarephath, the reason why God did what he did, God looks at you. He knows the number of air strands on your head. Mm. He knows them by name. Mm. Nobody can count air strands on your head. So he knows inside of you. He knows what you are battling with. If your problem was, I cannot give this one dollar, God will send one person to collect that one dollar. I kid you not. Mm. In order for him to bless you. Because he knows that he wants... So that widow has a son that she has to feed. And God knew, in order for me to bless her, I have to take away that extensive love for her son, for her to look up to me. That's why. Hmm. So sometimes, God will say, go into fasting for 21 days, or go into fasting for 7 days, or go into fasting for 3 days. Zoom out of everybody. Don't pick your phone. Hmm. 7 days, don't pick your phone. Because he knows you're always on Instagram and Facebook. Hmm. That could be your own widow of Zarephath. Hmm. Payment. Why did God say Abraham should go and slaughter his son as a sacrifice? Hmm. Why? Because he loved, that was the only thing he had to show for. So that's why I said don't listen to anybody that just comes to say, come and do this and do that. Hmm. Now back to my discussion. If you're a business, if you're, if you're looking to start a business, start from home. If, for example, you're very good at making drinks, make your drinks from home hmm. and just 
Package it well. How much is it to get a very good glass bottle? Get your drinks in glass bottle. Hmm. And also, just introduce yourself to people you know. Let your friends market to mouth. you. What of mouth marketing goes Word a long way? Mouth. Word of mouth. Let your friends market you. Tell them, okay, this drink, try it. Don't be too stingy. Let them try it. If they like it, the next time... What did I do? I, I make this drink. Um, it's it's a milk, but I found out that it really helps people, especially for I personally sell it to married couples anyway. Um, helps married couples like the man, you know, to it helps whatever issues they have, and also it helps people with diabetes. Mm. So I said I went to people that I knew would need it, especially people that I knew had high blood pressure and diabetes. And I sold it to them. But before I sold it to them, I gave them, I packaged the drink very well. I said, try it. If you like it, let me know. So don't be too stingy. Let them try your product. When they see sense in it, trust me, they come back. This lady, I gave one to her and she gave it to her husband. And her husband, who had not been sleeping before, started sleeping well. So instead of her ordering one, she ordered like eight or so. At the same time. Hmm. It's not that she had the money. But because she saw that it was good. Hmm. Start small. Hmm. Show it to family. Let them try it. Let them give you their candid. I think people still tell me what I do wrong. When I go for. That's why I like doing videos. When I go for ministrations. People will tell me. My husband is my number one critic. He'll tell me. Why do you like yelling when you are singing? My producer will tell me. Why are you always singing only Yoruba? My, you know, they tell me things that I need to know. You know, they tell me, okay, start small. Start small. When you start small, you grow. I've seen people that they just started from their bedroom. Mm -hmm. Some of them didn't even have homes. Well, they were living no, with no, their. Amazon no, started from his room, from his tiny room, and now he's the he's the richest. Well, at that now before the divorce, he's the richest man in the world. <laughs> And he even bought all foods, right? Or he's buying it, whatever he's doing. But that's that's it. That's 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 just when you have an idea, first keep it to yourself, please. Because there's someone somewhere that I don't know if it, they don't have they don't realize they have the gift to think. They are just there to steal other people's stuff. Keep it to yourself, then go before God. Goals. I'm reading something about goals. Goals plus God. Set the goals. The Bible says write a vision and make it plain that day that that that, that, that day may run and not fade. Day that carry yeah. will run and not fade. So that's why you have to make sure that you write your vision. A lot of people wait till New Year's fly. <laughs> because when you're waiting till sometimes it doesn't work. Write it now. Now that we're talking about it, go. Write your vision. Who am I? Here's what I tell my clients. Write on the left side of the page who you think you are mm. and who your friends think you are. Or write what you like to do and what, you, what your friends think that you like to do. Or write what you are and what you like to do. Crisscross it. You'll find only two or three. People. So number I one, I'm a Kaya. Mm. I'm Makaya, I'm a wife number one thing good lesson for people in ministry please, your family is your number one ministry mm. Mm. so number one I'm Makaya, I'm a wife well maybe I saw this in I'm a daughter as well because my, my mom is still alive but apart from that I am in music ministry so I sing also I'm a business consultant also, a lot of people don't know, but I actually I speak to young adults, especially teenagers. So before they start getting in their little quarter-life crisis, I already get a hold of them. Mm. Then I crisscross it. Next thing, who am I? I'm a music minister. I'm a business consultant. Hmm. I write... I speak. Chris Cross, it's, the only things that match is business consulting and music minister. Hmm. 
You know, one of the things that people forget, and, and one solid thing you just said is remind yourself of who you are. Most people get so busy with life and so and get overwhelmed with that problem. And I was having that conversation with a friend yesterday um, when we were having that kind of discussion. And I was telling her, I said, a lot of times we forget who we are, not because not because we intentionally want to forget, but we allow these situations, these life issues, these life problems get a hold of us. But one of the things that um, I would say that we have learned today, if we didn't learn anything, if we didn't learn anything today, is number one, when you get an idea, or when God calls you into something, or when you have a thought about something, the first person you have that conversation with is God. Now, I want to give this well, example, and I am not using this to scare people. <laughs> the parable of the talent still happens to you today. And I've seen that in yes. to a friend of mine. Um, God gave this person a song. The person kept this song. And years after, she went to a church, and, and they were singing what? it. They were singing that song. So it reminds me of the parable of the talents. Five, three, one. Now, no matter how small it is, God has given you. Now, there are two things about the person that had the five talents. He utilized the five talents that gave him five. He didn't utilize one out of the five. He utilized the five. So there are times God has given some of us so many ministries, so many giftings, so many ideas. Now, number one, take it a step at a time. I know the direction that God wants you to follow with it. Number two, make sure you utilize and expand that territory of what God has given you. And number three, seek God's place for the plan because he's the author and finisher of our faith, right? So he's the one that knows how to direct us through this plan. Now, remember that if you don't use these talents or giftings or, or whatever God has given you well, just like the pers one person that buried his one talent, it will be given to the person mm. that has worked hard. So today, if you've not learned anything from whatever I have said, we have learned a lot from Minister Micaiah, both in ministry and both in business. Don't There's say I do don't sit I do with your giftings. Don't sit I do whatever it is God has given you. If you're in business, put yourself out there. There is no rule. I always have to question my friend. There is no rule when it comes to marketing yourself. Well, the rule is to be decent, like whatever, but there is no rule to over marketing yourself. There is no rule. You have to put yourself, especially in this age, that don't just use social media for free. If you cannot, if you're not in mm. business, that's where you make money from it. Make connects from it. That if tomorrow morning mm -hmm. you want to, and I want to have a Life Matters conference in Dallas, Texas, I know that, okay, I can call Minister Mikhail, I can call Terrence, because I have cultivated that relationship through this relationship with people who sit down and just sleep on and wake up on and laugh on. But all these people, they are laughing at their jokes. They're making real life money, either by sponsored ads, sponsored posts, or they're making real life money by people seeing their work. Put your work out there. Make sure that you know. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just you, you can you can round up. You know, one thing that I would love to say this, and I kept it for the last, even though I almost forgot. But the Holy Spirit said I should I should say it. Hmm. Based on what you said. There's no way you, you can say God didn't warn you. Mm. Because you say, hey, this thing I gave you, you haven't used it. Mm. In 2000 and, 2008, something happened to me. I started bleeding crazy. Mm. For no reason. I was bleeding like God have mercy, bleeding. Bleeding to the extent that one time, I went for an interview. It was a group interview. And I sat somewhere, and by the time I stood up, everywhere on the carpet down was filled with blood. And I didn't know. That kind of bleeding. bleeding. And so, I was like, ah, what's going on, God? Three years of bleeding, nonstop. 
But in those three years was when I was dreaming of me singing. So I said, God, please, I beg you, if you can deliver me from this, there's nothing I didn't do. There was no doctor, nothing we didn't go to. Just help me. I will give it back to you through my praise. And all of a sudden, I got to the part where I almost fainted on the road because I'd lost so much blood and I went to the emergency. And they said, God saved you because you had, I think, a blood count of seven or something. They gave me three pints of blood. Three. Yes. Whoever it is that donated that blood from their blood bank, God bless the person in Jesus' name. But that's why I'm alive till now. Now, think of it from 2010. Why is it that I did not go again to go and sing immediately? Hmm. I didn't have the money, but I was going around singing at church. Hmm. I was going around. My pastor was taking me around, and I was singing everywhere. So when Nakaya came out, people already knew me that I sang. It wasn't new. When you have a business idea, if you start small, networking, like you said, is very, very important. Mm. Look at the networking events I started. How did I, my, my, the biggest client right now, I didn't even know, my phone just rang. I set that thing up, and a day after, he was like, hi, um, I, I, saw, I saw that you set up this event, and I need you to come because I have some blah, 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 blah to talk about. And I said, sir, nice to meet you, but where did you get my number from? And he told me it was from that thing I said up. Hmm. It doesn't come to that, it doesn't come to the event. It doesn't come even till now, it does not come. But he's my client. Why? Because I took that leap of faith to set up a networking event from the problems that I saw that I needed to solve. Hmm. So even if you don't, there's nobody that will say we all buy hamburgers every every time. Even $5 can get you your business. Mm. You mm. don't have money to register your business. Get an EIN number. It's free of charge. Mm. Don't let anybody come and collect money from you. Mm. you. You just go on, get your EIN number and start doing it until you have the money to register. Mm. Go ahead and make sure that you register with your county. Mm. And start your business from your home. Mm. Network. Go to networking events. Go to meetup.com and look for networking events with your zip code, you mm. will find something. Go and meet people. Get make your own business card. We all have computers. Even now, there are some phones that can do stuff. You know, make your own business card. Go and share it out. Give it to people. You don't know where your angel is. Mm. We all pray, and, and and you you if you go to church and keep saying I receive, I receive, and you don't do anything. Fifteen you years, you are still receiving. Dead. Yes, ma'am. You're still doing it. So, yeah, God healed me. God healed me with an angel again because mm -hmm. they referred me to this doctor who did not take a dime. Wow. And she was the one that God used. And that's how the yeah. beginning stopped. So, people, so, I, I have had an amazing time with Minister Mikhail. I am sure that yeah. you have learned a lot. One of the things that I know that both of us did not talk about in all this is have a good character character makes yes. a man let me tell you no matter how good <laughs> your business plan is no matter how sweet your 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 whatever how sweet whatever it is you have if you don't have a good character if you don't have good customer service if you don't have good oh uh, you never know who is in your audience and when i mean audience i don't mean like you're on stage you can be somewhere and the way you talk to someone on the phone and the person is like ah I can't give this person my business, so so please <laughs> let us have good character. And I pray God helps us in Jesus' name. I want to say a big thank you Amen. to Makaya. I want to say a big thank you to everybody that has been on the show today. I see my people, my family. God bless you. You come in week in, week mm -hmm. out to support your your girl, you know. I love you. I love you so much. God bless you, people. I pray that God will honor you in the name of Jesus. I mean, Mr. Makaya. Mm -hmm. Hmm. If you know the amount of things I, we have learned today, it's already already a book right now that I'm looking at it. But I want to say a big thank you to you for being on the show today. I know that um, 
you you could have done a thousand and one things today but you trust to be on the show i pray god will honor you i pray that the oil of the lord will never run dry in your life in the name of jesus i pray that you'll grow from glory to glory from strength to strength in the name of jesus so people amen don't forget she's makaya jesus on um on instagram you can go to you just you just write makaya like put makaya see I, I like google these days just write songs by Mac like it will it will rush it will rush out and and for me i think my favorite song right now is still thank you jesus by mr makaya featuring my cup so you're gonna listen to that at the end of the show again but um like we said on a lot of mr Mc okay I wanted to say real quick, I'm sorry. Um, from this show, they just need to mention that they were on the show. I'll be happy to have a free pre-consulting session with them. Woo! Just people that on this show, I can advise them. Oh, oh my God! Did you hear that? Oh my God. So if you're live, listen to me on Amen Radio, listen to me via Facebook, via Instagram, Listen! Oh my God, I am super excited. Minister Mikaya is doing us a grand. She didn't tell me this before, so this is the shock of life. She is doing this free of charge. So if you have a business idea, whatever part of the world you are, business idea when it comes to ministry, when it comes to regular business, you just send her. She's just a DM away. God bless you, Minister Mikaya. We celebrate you. Oh my God. I am super excited. I am super, like my head is like, woo! Okay. Amazing. So you just go to www.mikayajesus.com I'm, I'm a character, right? Um, Makaya Music is for the music Mikaya and Makaya Consulting. Mikaya Consulting, right? Yes, dot com. Dot com yeah. you go there and you, you heard her right. You heard her right. As we round off the show, oh my God, I am super excited. Yes, so follow her. You can send her a direct message. Um, send her a direct message and say, I was on Life Matters or I heard you on Life Matters. Or we are watching a repeat broadcast. We're going to put in the caption when we're done. When, when, um, what they call, oh my God, I am super excited. So people, you they need to tell us what they learned, though, because they need to tell us what they. I, I want to make sure it's people from this show alone. Yes. So, so they need to I'm let gonna, me know what they learned. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in the caption once we're done with the show right now. I'm gonna put in the caption for those that they're watching us live. They're they're over. I think if I add it all together, there are over 100 people that have watched us today again. I don't know those that are watching us on Amen Radio, but for whatever reason, you can send me a direct message. At gmail.com, and we will send the link to her and we'll, you have that connect to her. God bless you, Minister Micaiah. As we round off the show, I pray Amen. that as we continue in this week, God will bless every one of us, God will uplift us, God will cause his face to shine upon us in the name of Jesus. 2019 is your year of open heavens. I repeat, 2019 is your year of open heavens. Now, this is this is an instruction I just had in my spirit. Don't bring a cup mm. when the heavens are open. Don't bring a small <laughs> plate when the heavens are open. When the heavens are open, the container has to be very big. You have to have that capacity to be able to carry that big load. Whatever it is you have been asking God for a while, don't take a small cup. Don't take a tiny plate. Whatever it is you have been asking for God, go big with the faith you have in God. And you know that God is faithful and just to answer you. Thank you, Minister Makaya. Thank you, everybody. I celebrate you all. I love you. God bless you. And I'll see you next week. Don't forget to subscribe to our, our YouTube channel. Um, Minister Makaya, your YouTube channel is Makaya Jesus. I, I, am I correct? Makaya Music. Makaya Music. Makaya Music. So go to YouTube. Look for Anwar Dejire. Subscribe. Search again. Go to Makaya, G Makaya Music and subscribe and listen and watch and the album is on itunes is you can download you can get everything you want it's on spotify google play everywhere people today <laughs> has been an amazing day and i am super super excited god bless you minister mckay god bless you everybody i will see you next week on the same show life matters with another day don't forget to share our videos online God bless you, Minister Micaiah. I am super, super grateful. God will honor you in Jesus' name. 
And God bless your program too. God will Amen. bless and increase you in Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Bye, people. Bye.